So now we've got the coon that we just fleshed, we're ready to stretch it. For starters, coons are fleshed fur in, flesh out. So we're going to turn it back inside out. We're going to take, if you watch my video on wood versus wire stretchers, you know the different the different options you have for stretchers. And I'm a fan of these modified stretchers, um, incorporating the the wood and the wire. So that's what I use. And I just slide the coon right on the stretcher. Get his nose right there at the tip. And pull him on down. Make sure he's make sure he's good and centered on the board. Flip him over. And start at the tail. So what I want to go for, you know, it's all about presentation. So I'm gonna take and I'm gonna kind of pleat what they call pleat this hide. So I'm going to take it. I'm not worried about stretching the hide because the way these stretchers are, it's going to kind of automatically stretch itself. So I'm not worried about getting the length out of it like I would if it was a, you know, if I was stretching it on a, a wooden board. I'm just going to take my nail. You don't have to drive it in too much, but you want to tack it in enough where to hold right there, kind of on the center of the board, best I can. I'm going to take my other nail, and you see, I kind of push it in here kind of push it in and bunch it right here kind of make sure I'll show you in, at the end of finished product but you know this is the area that the buyer is looking at um, so this is where I want to make sure my fur is nice and thickest um, you know usually larger hides bring a higher dollar but you don't want to sacrifice the quality of your hide and stretch it, over stretch it just to try to get an extra dollar when you're probably hurting yourself in the long run. You can see I've got this kind of flat across the bottom. I want to make sure that I get my tail spread out. So I'm going to follow it all the way to the bottom because your tail, if you don't get it properly dried and it has a tendency to kind of roll up on itself, if you don't get it properly dried, it can rot. And that's the last thing you want is anything on your hide right and then I'm just going to stretch it out a little bit down the way zigzagging my nails just to make sure that I'm keeping it keeping it stretched out nice and open so that air can get to every every inch of the fur of the hide the flesh I guess actually all right So that's that. I'm going to flip it over. And I'm going to do the, really basically is what the, what the hind legs. Pull it around. Tack it in here. Pull the other flap around, tack it. You want it to all kind of be symmetrical, line up as best you can. Now I would say at this point you got to decide, or you you probably would already know, but are you going for uh, a fur market hide, or are you wanting to just tan this hide and keep it for your own personal use? If I'm going for a, a just a tanned hide, this is good. You know you can let this dry and then send it off to a, a tannery or tan it yourself. Once it gets dried, um, that, that's all you need to do. For the fur market, you're going to want to do a couple extra things here. One is the buyers want a window right here to look at this. Like I said, this is the area of the hide that they're interested in. So I'm going to take and cut, enlarge this window area. Go just above where the penis is. And kind of cut it down. I'm not getting too far out because your hide's going to, as it dries, it's going to stretch. Um, but I'm just enlarging this area. It's, it's kind of 
really similar to how it looked to begin with anyway just it's real natural looking so far as the shape of the hide but that's going to give the buyer a good area to look at that fur see how dense it is see how thick it is see what they want to do the other thing that i'm going to do is i typically wind up leaving the legs longer than they need to so i'm going to take them and i'm going to cut a couple inches off of there just because that you know that should help the legs kind of stick out and dry like that um, legs are on any fur are bad about if they're real long they'll drape over and in the drying process they'll lay like that and you'll pull them up and everywhere underneath there where it was overlapped won't get dried so that's uh that's the that's the gist of this i'll show you the finishing touch but but uh you know the way i got these hides or these stretchers made um i hang them actually by this board that slides up and down so i'll hang it upside down so the tension is going to stay on the hide it's not overly stretching it but uh as it dries you know it keeps hanging it by this upside down keeps tension on it and and will help maintain your length and but without overstretching. so i'll show you that in just a minute but i'll show you go ahead and i've got a i've got a fur that's i've got a hide that's done that's ready to be taken off the stretcher and you can see that's a it's real it's almost kind of papery acting or you know you can tell it's dry you can see that it's dry um so i'll this you see how this this leg is folded over here i need to pry that up that's exactly what i don't want to happen so i need to put a fan on that and make sure that does dry out and that's exactly what i'm talking about there you and in fact i'm afraid that it's already got a little rot to it i can smell it and that uh you can see that that um that's slipping right there so that's that's not something i'm going to want to send to to the market which is a shame um that's the little things like that are what'll catch you you want to really pay attention to stuff like that but anyway i'll show you as if i was gonna continue right on doing it i'll go ahead and pull my pull my nails out man i hate that that, that really bums me out now you know that's not to say that if you wanted to tan this hide you know the rest of the hide is really going to be fine um like if i was going to tan it i'd either go ahead and salt it salt that area put a fan on it dry it throw it in the freezer something to stop the rot from from continuing on um but you know if you were just wanted as kind of a th throw hide or to try to make a hat or something out of it you could still you could still do that you're just going to be missing a chunk of fur right there under that front leg i'm glad i knew that because i'm going to go look at all my other furs now to make sure that i didn't have that happen the good thing about this where i had a little hole here in the chin go ahead and pull those tacks out the good thing about wire usually pretty easy to get off you don't have to worry about a belly board or anything like that pull it right out And this is the this is the window this is the area that the buyers are going to really look at so as it's during shipping and all it's going to get kind of matted back down again but i always like to kind of take a take a brush and just fluff fluff it up you know maybe run it against the grain stand it all up you want to put your best foot forward so and there you can see that that hide and fur looks really dense really nice that uh that's how i want my my fur to be when i got ready to ship it off to sell it then lastly what i'm going to do is hang my i've got a series of nails up here uh on this board and i'm going to take my take my hide hang it upside down by this little hook that i've got up here and that's placing pressure on the hide kind of keeping it stretched out as it goes you know keeping a little bit of pressure that's going to keep stretch it out a little bit like i say not over stretch it and i'm gonna let it sit dry like that check my feet my legs they're not folded over that's good and uh let it sit there i'll have a fan in here circulating not blowing directly on the hide but just keeping air circulated in here to make sure that i get drying in a in a timely manner 
And then that's all there is to, to fleshing and stretching your coon hides.